Hello, viewers, and before I start, I am streaming this on Twitch. Um, if some people complain that I, the video is lagging a little bit, it's not lagging so much because I'm streaming Twitch. It's lagging because my computer sucks. So anyway, let us begin the much-requested Livid Farm guide. For Livid Farm is a non afk -able activity on Lunar Isle. It's just north of the main town. So here's the main town. The lodestone is here. The dock is here. And this is Livid Farm right here to the north. Um, while the seal of passage is not required for this activity, some may need it to access the bank in town, just in case you need to restock on runes, because I don't think you want to be bringing 20,000 plus runes with you all over the place. Um, the seal is not required, however, if you've done Dream Mentor, as you can just use Bird's Eye Jack to access your bank. Just don't talk to the other bankers or they're going to boot your butt out. Um, the a seal of passage, while you can teleport once a day there and until you unlock the lodestone after your first visit here, it is the quickest way there until you do the lodestone. However, it's not the only way. On the western dock here in Relica. Bloop, bloop, that's not Relica. Relica, right here. You can talk to Lokar and he will throw you to Pirate's Cove. And you hop on the ship, talk to the captain there, and they'll put you to Lunar Isle. However, if you do not have the Seal of Passage, you simply lie to Lokar and just tell him you're just going to Pirate's Cove, nowhere else. And he'll take you there. Yay! Um, if you've activated the lodestone, as I said, that becomes the quickest way. You can also use the Wicked Hood, and that will teleport you here to the Astral Altar. A uh, telegroup Moon Clan spell, regular Moon Clan teleport. If you're on Lunars, you can do the Lunar Home teleport. A uh, great orb project, you can buy Astral Altar teleports from there. Or you can go after the Throne of Miscellanea quest. You can do it from wherever the heck on this map is. Oh, there, th miscellaneous. Yeah, th that will. You can go there somehow too. Uh, some handy fairy codes are is the AJR, that drops you at the Fremenic Slayer thing here. This is for first-time users, obviously. Um, then you can run over there, as well as CIP, which drops you on Miscellanea, as well for first-time users. After that. Just use a lodestone. It's a lot easier that way. To do this, you must have done Lunar Diplomacy and be on Lunars. This can be done by going here to the Astral Altar and praying at it. That will switch your spellbook. That's the southeast of the town. The non-negotiable levels you are going to need is 60 Agility, 50 Construction, 60 Crafting, and 60 Farming. Um... 91 magic is needed if you want the full points and experience. 93 for all the distractions. Those don't yield points. Um, but it is mandatory for 70 magic. So if you lack the magic levels for the spells, you can still do them, but you're going to get jack all for magic experience and you're going to get about half the produce points. So you're going to get the normal... XP for the secondary spell uh, for the secondary skills like the crafting and construction and the farming. However, a lot of people they do want to come here not only to unlock the spells but for the magic experience. So you have to factor out whether or not this expensive way of training it is worth it for you. Things you are going to need. You are going to need. I require this. I say that this is a requirement, not just optional. Um, because this cuts down on your cost a lot, you're going to need some form of mud staff, whether it's mud battle staff, mystic mud staff, or regular mud, whatever, so long as you have a mud staff, you're going to need that, as well as some astral and nature runes. Um, if you want, you can use artisans or constructors outfits, because that will give you some bonus experience in the skill. Um, if you want to do distractions, you're also going to need Cosmics, Deaths, Law, and Mind Runes. Most of them are pointless, though. They only really give you the basic magic experience as well as some additional runes. They, they don't give you any points or anything. If you, have over, if you have 91 magic, you are going to need a total of 52,186 Astrals and 23,134 Nature Runes. 
If you decided against the mud staff, you'll also need 287,830 earth runes and 10,760 water runes. All this will cost you about 20 to 40 mil, depending on what staff you choose to use and any of the distractions you decide to participate in. This is going to take, probably for the average player, at least 45 hours before you can, if you plow through all this stuff that you can do in under the 60 seconds before Paulina says, hey, guess what? I'm going to restart everything. Yay. And then she restarts everything and you have to begin the cycle again. Farming plots. You can fertilize them for 20 points. That will give you 87 magic experience and 91 farming experience. You see these diseased ones? Look at what they look like and click on one. Some stuff will pop up. And if you choose the right one, that will cure the disease. And that will give you 20 points, 60 magic experience, and 91 farming uh, experience. That's pretty much what all you can do. There are three patches that need to be fertilized and three patches that need to be cured. On to the next part. We have construction. You are going to snag yourself some lumber. Or you can right click log pile take five. This gives you more. I would highly recommend converting two of the planks. And you will see some broken fences. You just click on the broken fences and that will use the planks to fix them. That's going to knit you 20 points as well as 90 magic experience and 54 construction experience. Now for crafting. Of course, there's nothing in there because she's feeling depressed. If her head is down or there is nothing in this produce bin right here, you have to right click encourage Paulina and choose whatever thing would be the best to perk her up. You're doing a fantastic job. Look at all the produce being made. Such and such will really appreciate this. Hurry the hell up so I can get my points, please. Any of that stuff. So there we go. Now we start it again. Take some produce. And then you bunch them. And then you deposit them in the trade wagon. Now that's the string jewelry um, that will net you 120 points, 83 magic experience, and 270 crafting experience. Once again, if there are no livids or her head is down, you can energize her. This happens every few um, turns or so. And you have to do that, which I guess is okay. That if you energize her, like I just did, that nets you 120 points, no magic experience, but 169 agility experience. Um, for full XP, fertilizing needs 83 magic, curing plants needs 66, plank make needs 86, string jewelry is 80, and energy transfer is 91. If you're good enough to peg everything off before the 60 seconds is up, the maximum XP you can earn per hour, assuming you have all the levels for everything, is 33,048 farming XP, 6,552 construction XP, 12,960 crafting XP, and an itty bitty 6,109 agility XP, as well as 41,244 magic XP. That gives you a total of 99,913 experience an hour through all of them. Um, for the Rotation, what Wiki suggests is at the start of each cycle, you fertilize the three empty patches, cure the three disease patches, encourage Pauline if she needs it. Then you would take the lumber, right click, remember right click, take five if you need them. That makes it a little bit quicker. Don't, don't fill up your inventory because you are going to need to take some produce. You convert two of the planks, you fix the fence if needed to the north and to the west of the thing and then you go you take some bunches you convert them and you fix the plank to the north or to the east of the bin if needed and then you deposit them into the wagon and then you just keep rinsing repeating going around doing the same darn thing over and over and over again because this is going to take a long time and you're going to get bored of it and you're going to rage quit it a lot Okay, once in a while, the ibis will pop up. It is sick. You need to diagnose it. 
Okay, my bad. Um, to find out what it is the IBIS is sick from, you need to right click your little summoning thing there and you need to go to the interface and it will tell you there. I just remember that that's how it's done after I kind of finish recording. Oops. And then you tell Meteora. Okay, now if a Sucka pops up and attacks Pauline, all you have to do is right click her and select Encourage. You'll get 100 Magic be a Nature Rune, 2 Laws, 3 Astrals, 10 Waters, and 16 Earths. Okay, unfortunately I waited about half an hour and I could not get Murky Pat to pop up, but if he pops up um, and does whatever, you have to Vengeance Other, the character that is talking with him, and select the right option. I don't know what that means. Unfortunately, I've never seen him myself. Um, that's going to give you two deaths, three astrals, 15 water, and 20 earths, as well as 108 magic experience at level 93. So let's talk to her, who unfortunately will not get killed by this thing, and claim rewards. This is what we're going to see for our stuff. Um, for un these are unlockable spells. Uh, once you've reached the required points, you can claim them from Pauline. Uh, it's not until you unlock borrowed power will the points be taken away from you for the spells. Uh, for the first spell is unlocked at 69,840 points, which is the South Falador Teleport, requires 72 magic. It ports the caster to Fally's Southern Gate. At 139,760 points is the Repair Rune Pouch, 75 magic. If you cast this on an Essence Pouch, it will repair it, as well as increase the durability by five times. So it'll take five times longer to degrade. At 227,120 points is the North Ardy Teleport at 76 magic. This ports the caster to the end of the path north of Ardy's East Bank. At 314,480 points is Remote Farming at 78 magic. Uh, you'll be able to cast it and see how your patches are doing and cure any ones that are diseased. At 401,840 points for the spiritualized food, that's 80 magic. You use it on food and will heal your familiar as well as boost some of its stats. I don't know if it's all because I've never used it because I can't yet. <clears throat> At 489,200 points is the Make Leather. At 83 magic, this will tan up to 5 hides each time it is cast. At 576,560 points for Disruption Shield at 90 magic, this will negate the next player inflicted hit on you. Only player inflicted. It will not do anything else, unfortunately, or I would be abusing it horribly. At 663,920 points is the Vengeance Group. At 95 magic, this will cast Vengeance on up to 50 players in a 7x7 area around you, assuming they all have except Adon. I can imagine that would be kind of fun to troll people that are trying to honestly PK. Particularly a large group of people, that'd be sweet. 744,400 points for the Teleport to Trollheim at 92 magic. It will bring you to the Trollheim Herb Patch. At 806 fourth. 100 points. Um, you will get the group teleport of that, which will teleport everyone in a 3x3 area around you that has accept aid on to the patch. At 850,000 points, you learn Borrowed Power. For 99 magic, this lets you use non-lunar spells while on the lunar spellbook. Once again, after Borrowed Power, all of your 850 points are going to be deducted you can only get a max of 850 points. So if after you learn Borrowed Power and you have 850,000 points, spend them because you can't get any more. Uh, also, Pauline will be added to the list of people you can talk to with the NPC contact spell. And this also unlocks the ability for wishes. You keep in mind wishes while you can view them and stuff. You will not be able to do anything with them until such time as you do have Borrowed Power. Now, wishes are temp boosts. They don't require any runes, but they will always cost produce points, and you must have the produce points available as that they will be deducted right away. At 5,500 points, we have the Vile My Herbs. This changes up to 50 of each herbs, which can be noted, into unfinished vials so long as they are in your inventory. They do not work on cave nightshades. At 5,500, you can choose turn lunar lumber into runes. This 
If uh, assuming you have a full inventory, it will give you ten cosmics, death, earth, natures, astrals, twenty-five astrals, sorry, and ten waters. At eighteen thousand points, let it rain seeds. That pops roughly nine of certain seeds on the ground for a short time, and it lets you pick them up. Um, they will consist of cactus, poison ivy, watermelon, curry, and orange tree seeds. At 18,000 points, we have gimme herbs that will give you an assortment of grimy noted herbs consisting of elantidime, two avento, two cadentine, three irrit, and three quorm. Quorm, 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 cream. At 18,000 points is reduce the fish I burn. This makes you less likely to burn non-dungeoneering fish for 30 minutes. I don't know if it's the equivalent of the cooking gauntlets, unfortunately. At 18,000, we also have more planks, please. This will give you a 1 in 10 chance the non-lunar lumber plank make spell. So not the one here that you cast here, but the one that you cast regularly. Um, it will give you an additional one noted plank if you have the space, or two if you don't. I presume that means it will simply replace, if you don't have the inventory space, it will replace one of them with a noted. Let it rain awesome seeds at 55,000 points. This will pop an assortment of seeds on the ground for you to pick up for a short time. This consists of two papaya and pineapple seeds, four ranar, four watermelon, four willow, and six curry seeds. At 18,000 points, we have I'd Like a New Patch. It gives you a one-time use allotment farming patch that will remain until you have cleared it. At 18,000 points, we have Give Me an Arcane Capacitor. It gives you an uncharged arcane capacitor necklace for use with a board power spell. If all charges are used or it is removed, it will become, or sorry, if all the charges are removed, it will become protect a patch for me at 37,000 points. This gives a scroll that protects a tree or fruit tree patch with something growing in it. Only one scroll is usable at a time, but it protects 10 of the same types of tree. So there you go. I hope I've answered all questions. And my apologies for being two years late in coming out with this. Anyway, have fun. Good luck unlocking all the spells. And that's it. Ciao.